Hi, I'm so stoked. I finally got to finish this enclosure after it broke from the move. This is the trash themed setup for Beth and she has destroyed the naturalistic looking setup. So I'll let the pothos grow out in there and then it'll look all nice and then introduce the other uncles into that enclosure. But yeah, look at this. This is so cool. I'll give you a nice close up shot of the trash set up it's got a nice halogen bulb because I'm I'm slowly but surely switching over to halogen heating and then I also want to get UVB and all the good stuff because your snakes deserve it well my snakes deserve it so do yours this is why I don't particularly like keeping spillers like hey she's not actually gonna spit at me but you know safety first such a calm snake I love this girl so much she's so beautiful and she's going to really really enjoy her new home go girl oh Idiot, you gotta open the enclosure. There we go. Keep your eye on the snake. No. Nope. Go inside there. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, it's nice, eh? Nice. Where do you think you're going? Let's talk about something that doesn't happen nearly often enough. That is setting up your enclosure and preparing everything and having the enclosure already and perfect like weeks or months before your animals even arrive and not going out and impulse buying something because oh I saw this cool snake and let's go get it. No, let's set up these things and get it all perfect, get the temperatures running smoothly so you know everything's working perfectly before you get the animal. Don't get the cage and the animal on the same day. You want everything to be set up perfectly beforehand. Like you can see here, I've had these enclosures that I built. In fact, there was a lot of designing that went into these. So this one's heat won't affect the bottom one's heat. They are properly done. There's gonna, it's gonna be able to handle water so I can put fish in there if I really want to. It's got lots of airflow space. It, these enclosures are really really good it's taken me a little bit longer to finish off but also preparing for specific animals way before I even get the actual animals because at the end of the day even if you make the enclosure look nice it's gonna be a really nice enclosure to look at before you even get the animal to put it in so let's go over to these enclosures here for some baby arboreal vipers Huge shout out to Ohana Exotics, Eckhart, one of my best friends. Uh, go follow him, he's actually got a YouTube channel and he's actually posting regularly now. He sponsored me with all of these and gave them to me, but I need to finish them up. So let's do that now. So why am I putting all of these on their back? Well, I've got these little hinges over here. So this glass is actually not secured on, so I won't be able to open it. It's just taped on, as you can see with this bit of tape here. So what I'm gonna do is grab some silicone and glue these tiny weeny little hinges on here so I can open, hey, excuse me. You can see these enclosures actually have a nice amount of airflow. So air comes in here, obviously hot air rises. So it comes out there, sucks it through and makes this little suction. So you can get fresh air for your little baby vipers, which I don't recommend you keep. Check it out, the hinges are on. The doors are working really nicely. They swing open, woo! And just to let you know, there is gonna be a giveaway because I'm just about to hit 10K subscribers. I'm super stoked. So somewhere in this video, I'll tell you a bit more about the giveaway, so stay tuned. So, the Puff Adder has a new light and the Puff Adder's lights went here into the setups for the squams. I don't know if you can see it nicely, but I still need to do the divider. It's got a nice background set it up now, and I just got to do the divider in the middle so I can have one here, one here, and that's the perfect amount of space, more than most people give them, because I think they deserve space. They're cool snakes. And yeah, check it out. You know what's one of my most frequently asked questions? What is the best beginner venomous snake? As if there's such a thing. Let me take something out and explain a little bit more. So let's get this little copperhead out of its enclosure because I totally keep it in this little cage over here. So this over here is a copperhead. It's regarded as one of the best beginner venomous snakes. However, I completely disagree with that. These little guys, especially as babies, A, they stink, they really have a nasty smell to them, but B, 
they are super super feisty and it's very easy to be bitten by them when you don't know what you're doing and trying to handle these guys and you've watched guys on YouTube so you're like oh let me just tail this little viper because oh it's it's harmless type of thing no I do not agree I think the best beginner venomous snake is somebody else's don't go out and get it yourself a copperhead especially a baby because they are super super feisty as babies they're like they're almost like little bathrops, not quite, but they can have a large attitude for the size of their body because these guys are absolutely tiny. They're beautiful, don't get me wrong, but they are not a good beginner venomous snake in my opinion. You should rather find yourself a mentor, find yourself someone to learn from and use their snakes as a learning curve so there's someone to teach you what to do, what not to do. Another thing, you've got to be very careful of who you choose to become your mentor because there's a lot of people frankly I would not like to become a mentor for me so you should be very picky who you see as a mentor and choose wisely so quite frankly I do not suggest you go out and get a copperhead as a first beginner venomous snake the best is to find yourself a mentor have hundreds to thousands of hours of working with different species under the supervision of somebody who actually knows what they're doing because largely it doesn't really matter what you start out with if you have the necessary experience and the amount of hours underneath your belt experiencing all the different things that these animals can do but having said that I don't think copperheads are a good starter snake because many people just say oh god get yourself a copperhead it's a good venomous snake to start with no it's not that is not true these little guys are super feisty as you saw in the beginning there he bit the hook as soon as I took him out yeah he looks calm now but if you starting out you may be tempted to do stuff that you see other people do on the internet and that can get yourself in a world of pain and a load of debt speaking of debt well in fact this has nothing to do with debt I'm doing a giveaway over here because I'm just about to hit 10,000 subscribers so what you need to do with the giveaway is just comment something nice be subscribed and I will pick a winner. What you're going to win is two t-shirts from the norm. All the amazing snake t-shirts that you see me wearing on like a daily basis. That's where I get them from my buddy Izzy. He actually draws them and he makes them himself. So he is sponsoring you guys with one t-shirt and I'm buying the other t-shirt and we can ship worldwide. So comment on this video and you will have a chance to win one of these t-shirts and thank you so much for almost 10k subscribers it'll also really help if you share but that's not a must or have to do to enter the competition sadly but I would love if you could do that the awesome thing is you can choose whatever two t-shirts you want to if you win so I'm going to contact the winners once I hit 10k subscribers I will be announcing this in future videos too until I reach 10k subscribers so every video you comment on will be another entry into the competition but you can't enter more than once on each video if that makes any sense so say bye to this little copperhead and yeah that's the rules for the giveaway it will end once I reach the goal of 10,000 subscribers and then we'll pick a winner and one of you lucky guys will get two t-shirts well all girls will get two t-shirts from the norm and myself so thank you for 10k say bye to mr. little copperhead he's looking at me but it would be cool if we could get that shot on camera but he's like I'm I'm focusing on you Bryce so some of the shirts you can choose from are this over here the pseudo serastes rorocanoides which is a spider tail viper or the Atheris Hispida, the hairy bush viper, which I was wearing in the beginning of this video. So go check out the website, it'll be linked down below, and then you can start dreaming and choosing what you wanna pick if you win. Guys, where there is a will, there's a way. There's an important factor that I think we need to also take into consideration, and that is always trying to better the care for our animals. So for instance here, I'm setting up an enclosure for some squams in the future and they really don't like the high humidity and I want to have a nice live planted setup and with plants that brings up the humidity quite a bit so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a PC fan right by the air vent and I've just kind of made this makeshift way so the snakes can't come in contact with the actual fan that spins so what I've done is I've glued toothpicks 
onto the fan. It's not a really pretty looking way, but where there's a will, there's a way. So there's always a way to make something happen. Most of the stuff I've used is from recycled stuff, like the backgrounds in fact were parts of broken polystyrene, either from the last reptile room that I did where we had to strip out the floor when we moved and everything like that. So when you just become a little bit creative, you're able to find ways to do things that would actually take a lot of time, effort and energy as well as finances to do. So like all of this, you can find light, you can find ways to do these setups that make them look really nice and your animals can interact with them and you don't even have to spend a fortune, you just got to spend a fortune on this. So you got to use your brain and like get the gears cranking, be a bit creative and start thinking of ideas. So like this, all of this is literally trash that I've cleaned out and I'm using for a themed setup for my wrinkles because I think it looks amazing and it's got everything she needs. Lack of UVB at the moment, which I'm wanting to get there, but it's an amazing enclosure, lots of enrichment for her. She's got a nice substrate that she can bury herself in, dig around, lots of hiding spaces, lots of different textures, smells, scents, and little things to climb on as well. And all of that was free, recycled, reused. I just had to use my brain to rack the gears and make something really cool. Just as this enclosure here, recycled stuff. This was all bamboo being thrown away from someone. I just collected it and it took me a few years to find what I needed to use it for, but then I cut it up, put it in this corn snake enclosure. The background there is cork, which were like old placemats that were being thrown out that my gran had and I used it to make a background. Same story with this over here. Same, well, similar looking cork. And yeah, you just gotta use your brain basically. You can do it too. So there we go, we have the fan secured. I don't think those toothpicks are sufficient. I'm going to get like a nice screen to put over there. So guess what? I found this little guy on my lawn this afternoon, which is pretty cool and weird considering I live quite a fair distance away from the river so I'm hiking now to go to the river and let him go. You can probably hear it behind you as I am almost there. He was probably dropped off by a bird that was trying to make a meal out of him and he managed to escape which is really cool so I'm just about getting to the river over here hopefully not going to step on any snakes or anything of that sort. Whoa and we are here. So let's let him go, I guess. Give me a kiss. Bye. No, he wants to pinch my lips. I don't want that to happen. Bye, little dude. Oh, check it out. Check at this. There's a freaking huge one. Whoa. Now that's a big boy. Holy. That's a nice big crab. How, how crazy is that? As I released the one guy, I found this little guy. I have no idea what species these guys are, so if you know in the comments, let me know. If this guy got a hold of me, I bet it would be pretty painful, especially if he got hold of my nose. Hey, how cool is that?